In this second video in the series, we're having a quick look at the option of using concrete pads for garden room foundations with the help of some first-hand experience from Chris Wigley. Pad foundations come in two forms, a fixed height type and a height adjustable type. Chris purchased the latter and got in touch with me to provide us all with an up-close look at the pads in action. Over to you, Chris. These are the easy pads in action. You've got a variety of different combinations of metal platform, which are obviously for different purposes. Here you've got one that is for corners. You've also got one that will accept a T-junction or two timbers butted up to each other. And you've got a big square plate which allows various timbers to meet in uh, the middle of the middle of the building. They're very easy to adjust as they whip out and this nut can obviously go up or down and so even with timbers in place you can make fine fine movements the thing i don't like is once you get too far down that adjustment it seems to me that they become increasingly un unstable and that, that worried me slightly, so I dug the pads in deeper than I might have done in order to make less use of the that extension. So to sum up, easy to use, um, but in the long run, quite expensive. I might not have done it if I'd seen one of your videos first. Thanks now. I really love this because when researching online, you're not quite sure what to expect from a product. So to see them in a video, exactly how they fit together is really helpful. So thank you, Chris. So let's look at the advantages and disadvantages of these plinths compared with the block piers that I use for my foundations. The obvious advantage is that there is no need for cement or concrete, which saves on time. You still have to use hardcore under the plinth, and depending on how high off the ground you want them, you still have to dig down. The second advantage, as Chris discussed, is the ability to adjust the height of the plinths. And for me, the biggest bonus is you can do this once the floor has been attached, which means that if your timber has some irregularities, you can compensate for that by adjusting the height of each plinth accordingly, not something that you can do with blocks. Now, hopefully something that would never happen, but could, is that during the lifetime of the building, if there's any subsidence, then one side of your building might start to sag. So in that case, with adjustable height plinths, you could get a car jack under the side that's sagging, lift it back to level, and then adjust the height of the plinth to support it. So it acts as a very good insurance policy against subsidence. Third, to attach the floor, it's very easy as you just bolt the metal component directly to the joists, as they have holes pre-made for this purpose. For my concrete block piers, I had to drill into the blocks and then attach with an angle bracket, square to a snails, into the timber and a washer and masonry screw bolt into the block. Lastly, they allow for more temporary buildings, or if you ever intend to move your garden room, you can take your foundations with you. As for disadvantages, you have to be very exacting on where your floor joists will be before you lay the plinths, which is easier said than done. For block piers, as the tops are flat, you have some leeway to move the floor around on top until you're satisfied with its position, which you can't do with plinths, as to move the floor, you have to move the plinths as well. As Chris showed, they do look a bit wobbly, which I'm sure isn't such an issue once the weight of the building is on top, but clearly you can't adjust the metal rod over the entire length, as you need to have a decent portion of it within the concrete pad. So you still have to be reasonably precise with getting the level of hardcore correct when laying them down. And finally, the price. They are expensive. Chris had 11 plinths at £40 a pop, and compare that with maybe £5 per block pier, it's quite a difference. So in summary, generally I'm in favour of any innovation that makes constructing timber buildings more accessible and being able to adjust the height is great, but I feel like the price of them needs to be lower to really make them a contender, as that's what put me off using them when I was researching my foundations. For those of you in the planning stages of your builds, considering these plinths, hopefully that was helpful. Big thanks to Chris for sharing and I really like this idea of collaborating with you guys, so if anyone is using ground screws or metal brackets for their foundations and fancies articulating their thoughts with photos or a short video, that would be superb. I'll leave you with this as a demonstration of sharing our ideas with one another. Check this out. Nick's build has been on the website for a while and the way he did his roof joist with the taper and paint colour inspired Jim so much that he replicated it on his own build, which I think is brilliant. Until next time.